Hey all, welcome back. So today we are going to discuss about microbial spoilage of food. Okay. So in your kitchen, you must have observed some foods. They get uh, some changes like unpleasant odor or the texture changes or some become more slimy or many times you actually observe microbial growth on them. Okay. So that is what we are going to study in today's video. So what is spoilage of food? So spoilage of food can be defined as any visible or invisible change which makes food or products derived from food unacceptable for human consumption. Okay, that means they are not good for human consumptions. You may get uh, illness if you consume those spoiled food items, right? So why spoilage occurs the microbial action or the microbial activities is the main reason okay yes there are some physical uh, and chemical um, processes which occurs and they also cause spoilage of food but besides that microbial spoilage is very very significant okay so spoilage of food can only cause health hazards to consumers not only they can cause health hazards to consumers but also large economic losses okay so consider a food manufacturing industry any kind of food manufacturing industry if the processing is not done well and if um, say sterilization or say uh, preservation or preservatives are not added correctly then what will happen the undesirable uh, microbes will start growing and that will lead to the spoilage of that particular food atom and eventually it will cause economic loss of that particular food industry so that is why we are studying spoilage of food okay so what leads to that so spoilage leads to loss of nutrients okay from foods and also causes change in original flavor and texture so that is how you actually um, observe and you actually conclude that yes there is a flavor change or there is a texture change it means that the food item is spoiled okay so it is actually a spoilage of food is a complex phenomena where a combination of microbial and biochemical activities takes place due to such activities various types of metabolites are formed which aid in spoilage okay so during the metabolism of uh, particular components from food various types of metabolites are formed which actually aid in the spoilage of food okay the ease with which food uh, sorry foods are spoiled depend upon factors described the foods are thus di divided into different classes first is perishable foods so these foods are readily spoiled and require special preservation and storage conditions for use these the, sorry the food of these classes are mostly used daily such as milk fruit vegetable fish etc so actually the perishable foods they have high water content and that is also one of the reason why they are most likely to get spoiled faster okay then there are semi perishable foods so this class of foods if properly stored they can be used for long duration example potatoes Next is non-perishable foods. So these food items remain in good form for long duration unless handled improperly. Okay, so it includes sugar and flour. Next point is about factors which affect microbial spoilage of food. The spoilage by physical and chemical modes, they play important role, but the microbial spoilage has most significant role. Okay, so combination of all these factors is ultimately responsible for overall spoilage of food. See, now physical um, mode is how if the food is not stored to the proper or optimum temperature, then what will happen? Microbial growth will start. Okay, so that is how chemical, physical and microbial uh, factors are responsible for the overall spoilage of food. The spoilage of food can occur at different stages. As I told you, um, 
for example not only in factories but even in your kitchens if it is not produced properly if the processing is not done means processing for example in your kitchen say cooking or storage okay so different stages like production processing or storage the spoilage can happen at any of these stages so various causes of spoilage at different stages are depicted in this image okay so you can uh, follow this you can memorize this particular chart and you can use this for your answers okay the spoilage of food due to microbial activity it initiates uh, activities initiates when undesirable microbes or microorganisms they colonize the food okay so how this can happen say if the food is not covered properly or it is not stored properly then what will happen the microbes or say spores of fungi they can settle down from the air and they start colonizing okay a simple example i gave you once colonization is established community grow on the food con constituents thereby utilizing them for their metabolism so for example a microbial sorry um, fungal spore has settled down on uh, say your curd curd is left open it is not stored properly so what will happen the spore will germinate it will start growing into a fungal structure by using the constituents which are present in curd okay using those constituents for its metabolism so during the course of such microbial activities the food becomes unsustainable for human consumption okay so let's see some parameters which affect the proliferation okay factors which affect the microbial spoilage okay first is intrinsic factors such as water activity acidity then oxidation reduction potential presence of antimicrobial compounds in food and food structures and extrinsic factors are like temperature humidity and other storage condition which aid the spoilage okay so a detailed video on intrinsic parameters and another video for extrinsic parameters are already uploaded on my channel you can check those or you can find the links in description box okay the next point is microorganisms in food okay so microbes we know they are ubiquitous and they are diverse in metabolism and are most significant cause of food spoilage bacteria and fungi including yeast and molds they are major causes of food spoilage so we know that bacteria are round uh, rod or spiral shape microorganisms and can grow under wide variety of conditions so they uh, there are many types of bacteria that cause spoilage okay so i am not going to discuss each and every bacteria or the genus and species of bacteria here okay generally the uh, description is given for bacteria food spoilage bacteria are primarily divided into two groups spore forming and non spore forming okay so here for spoilage of food we are focusing on spore forming bacteria and non spore forming bacteria okay so bacteria generally grow in low acid foods like vegetables and meat next form is yeast so yeast they grow uh, yeast growth causes fermentation which is the result of yeast metabolism so there are two types of yeast true yeast and false yeast true yeast will metabolize sugar producing alcohol and carbon dioxide which is simply fermentation and false yeast grows on a dry film on the food surface such as pickle bream so false yeast occurs in foods that have that have high sugar or high acidic environments okay so it will not grow within the pickle it will grow upon the film or or say uh, on the film of pickle bream okay upon that you will see the yeast is growing next is molds so molds grow in filaments forming a tough mass which is visible as mold growth molds form spores which when they are dry they float through air to find suitable conditions where they can start the growth cycle again molds can cause illnesses especially if the person is aller allergic to molds okay both yeast and molds can easily grow in high acid foods like fruits tomatoes jams jellies and pickles 
both are easily destroyed by heat okay that means yeast and molds they can be easily destroyed by heat so processing high acid foods at temperatures like 100 degrees celsius in boiling water in can for appropriate length of time destroys yeast and the next is changes in food due to microorganisms. So what are the changes which you can observe uh, in foods which are spoiled by microbes? So as microorganisms grow in food by virtue of their diversity in metabolism, they utilize components of foods and convert them into variety of chemical compounds. So you can see uh, components like carbohydrates, proteins or fats, they are primary tar targets of microbes okay so carbohydrates by the process of fermentation can be uh, converted into acids carbon dioxide and ethanol proteins by the process of putrefaction can be converted into amino acids amines and nitrogenous compounds and fats by the process of oxidation are converted into fatty acids acylglycerides etc so let's study the change in carbohydrate first. So carbohydrates are used to obtain energy. They are the primary source of carbon. We can say that. Okay. So while monosaccharides are preferred over complex carbohydrates. So microorganisms have ability to convert polysaccharides to simpler forms. For example, polysaccharide in, for example, starch. So starch is broken down to the simpler form that is glucose. Correct. The simpler form of starch is glucose. So polysaccharides are converted into simpler forms before obtaining energy. The utilization of simple sugars such as glucose vary uh, during aerobic or anaerobic condition. In aerobic condition, it is converted into carbon dioxide and water through glycolysis and other related pathways. But in absence of oxygen means in aerobic conditions, the process yields a number of compounds in different organisms. And this process is known as fermentation. Okay, so these compounds include alcoholic fermentation, lactic acid fermentation, coliform fermentation, and one more. So alcoholic fermentation is it occurs due to yeast, and carbon dioxide and ethanol are the end products. Lactic acid fermentation it is of two types: homolactic fermentation, where primary lactic acid is the end product, and heterolactic fermentation where Along with lactic acid, acetic acid, ethanol, glycerol, carbon dioxides are produced. Then next is coliform type fermentation. So this type of fermentation occurs in coliform bacteria. In, the, uh, in this process, acids such as lactic, acetic, formic acids are produced. Ethanol, glycerol, etc. are also produced. Okay. Next is propionic fermentation so it occurs in propionic bacteria and in it along with propionic acid succinic acid and carbon dioxide are produced okay so that was about carbohydrates next we are going to study about changes in nitrogenous compounds so proteins are the major source of nitrogenous compounds in foods thus degradation of proteins include hydrolysis by enzymatic actions right very primary thing that we study from first you correct the source of enzymes can be either microbes or foods own enzymes okay complex proteins are converted into polypeptides okay complex proteins are converted into polypeptides simpler peptides and amino acids the enzymes involved in conversion of proteins to polypeptides are termed as proteinase while those catalyzing the conversion of polypeptides into amino acids are called peptidases. Okay, so there are two enzymes involved here, right? Then the decomposition of protein can be aerobic or anaerobic. Usually the anaerobic decomposition of proteins results in the unpleasant order and this process is known as putrefaction. Along with nitrogenous compounds, other compounds responsible for the smell they also include sulfur compounds. The microbial activity on amino acids cause either deamination, that is removal of amine group or decarboxylation, which means removal of carboxyl group. Okay, so major organisms which are involved in conversion of nitrogenous compounds are Pseudomonas, E. coli, Clostridium and D. sulfotomaculum. 
okay so we are done with carbohydrates and nitrogenous compounds and last is changes in lipids the hydrolysis of lipids is accomplished by lip lipase enzymes produced by different microorganisms the major end products include glycerol and fatty acids which are further used by microbes for their metabolism okay so the end products are glycerol and fatty acids the oxidation of fats is also done by enzymes of food itself so high fat containing foods are prone to such process okay so we had studied about the conversion of components from the food apart from these the apart from uh, bacteria yeast and molds there are some viruses which are observed in food okay so viruses are obligate intracellular parasites they are host specific but several viruses have been implicated in food borne outbreaks so there are four acute gastroenteritis namely uh, calici virus rotavirus astrovirus and adenovirus the infectious hepatitis a virus enters a person through the contaminated food or water and it causes gastroenteritis okay viruses responsible for poultry disease have also been implicated in human alignments and the last part is about toxins so yes there are some toxins which are uh, observed in food and which lead to food borne diseases okay so mycotoxins are fungal metabolites which means toxins produced by fungi so fungal metabolites that get formed in food due to the growth of some strains like penicillium aspergillus and some other molds they are secondary metabolites and are of low molecular weight okay mycotoxins are of low molecular weight mycotoxins are highly thermostable and that is why it is difficult to get rid just by cooking or treating treating it at high temperatures okay as they are thermostable and they withstand the conventional processing temperatures they are highly toxic to large number of animals and also to human beings food borne diseases resulting in the ingestion of toxins in mold contaminated contaminated food is called mycotoxicosis okay so the food borne disease due to mycotoxins is called as mycotoxicosis mycotoxins affect kidney liver cause skin irritation and birth defects and death okay and they are also known to be carcinogenic in nature okay so this was about mycotoxin so here are some examples so aflatoxins are produced by aspergillus flavus and aspergillus parasiticus then ochratoxins by aspergillus ocarius then penicillium species okay and so on so these are some examples some uh, mycotoxins and organisms which produce these so try to memorize at least 3 to 4 examples and that will help you out for writing your answer okay so all this information which i had gathered is from this particular book food and industrial microbiology by suja sena and a uh, very easy language easy to understand and uh, memorize for your answers okay question and answers so i hope this video was helpful to you all do like share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching all the best